This is America in Space, a weekly news and information program on current events dealing with the space industry. Welcome, and thanks for joining me today. I'm Don Meyer, Space Coast News Editor. We take a lot of things for granted here on planet Earth. One such thing is water. There's a lot of it here. But on other celestial bodies, like the moon, for instance, you can't just pop on over to the corner store and buy a bottle of water. So you have to find another way to get it. That's where the Viper Rover comes into play. Here are Andy Altman, the senior producer at CNET, and Daniel Andrews, the project manager of NASA's Viper mission, to explain a bit more about Viper and the need to find water on the moon. But before the first woman, or even another man, reaches the lunar surface, we're sending a Viper, NASA's Volatiles Investigating Polar Exploration Rover. And it has one basic mission, find water on the moon. Part of NASA's long-term vision for lunar exploration isn't just visiting the moon again, it's actually sustaining human life there. And that is going to require resources. We could either bring everything from Earth, which is kind of our fallback position, or we can actually live off the land a little bit by using what's naturally there. Dan Andrews heads up the Viper program for NASA. He says identifying usable water on the moon is going to be key to keeping humans alive up there. You think of a gallon of milk, which is, you know, mostly water, and it's pretty heavy. And so bringing water from Earth to take care of needs of humans on the moon is expensive and challenging. So if you could actually find it on the moon, you can make use of it like it's an indigenous resource. So what will Viper be doing and how will it do it? Andy Altman and Daniel Andrews explain more of what Viper's mission is and how Viper is designed to accomplish that mission. Goal is to get Viper to the south pole of the moon. Gonna spend about 100 Earth days, driving a total of 12 miles, searching for ice deposits below the surface. This makes it the first ever mission to map resources not on planet Earth. Now, NASA knows there's ice at both poles. It's just not clear exactly where or how much of it's there. It isn't enough to say, I know there's oil here, or I know there's gold there, or even water here on Earth. You need to know specifically where it is because that'll drive how hard it is to get. The actual rover going to the moon will be about the size of a golf cart with a top speed of about half a mile an hour. And designing a rover for the lunar surface, it's not the same as building one for Mars. It's when we're on the sun, we are being cooked by the sun. When we're in shadow, we're unbelievably cold. There's nothing moderating those temperature differences. So the engineering challenge, designing a rover to be able to work in that environment is quite challenging. Viper will be solar powered, but because it'll be at a pole, the sun may only be about nine or 10 degrees off the horizon at high noon. So the solar array has to be on the side of the rover and the radiators to get rid of all that excess heat, they're on the top. And the Viper has to be really maneuverable. Remember, the lunar surface is full of craters and soil with varying degrees of thickness. That's why the four wheels can move independently. So Viper can move sideways or diagonally. We can dip a toe, one wheel, into one of these areas. And if we find that it's very soft, we have the ability to rock back and pull ourselves out. So it's a very capable rover that way. It's even led to some unexpected capabilities. When we laid it out this way, we hadn't thought of this, but we can actually do what we generously call swim. So what's on board the Viper? There's the neutron spectrometer, which scans for signs of water as deep as three feet below the surface. There's the one meter drill for drilling, and it's also equipped with a temperature sensor. Now, once the drill brings up a sample, it's scanned by two more spectrometers that give a more exact location of that ice and can determine how much of it's there. And the Viper is gonna have another unique distinction. It'll be the first NASA rover equipped with headlights. That's because it's gonna be exploring places that literally never see the sun. Rovers to date have not had to do that, or they've been, for example, on Mars, where they have an atmosphere that kind of lights up the environment when they're roving. In the case of Viper, because water ice is only there through deposition from comets and asteroids pelting the moon and then giving themselves into the soil, 
that all boils away because the sunlight hit, except in those areas where the sun can't shine into these permanently shadowed regions. We've got to go in there and actually explore and understand the nature of the soil and what's in it. Well, in order to do that, we need headlights. Now, the moon being a lot closer to Earth than Mars is, it does provide some advantages for the Viper team. Specifically, it gives them more direct control over the rover while the mission's underway. In the case of a Mars rover, it takes about 30 minutes to get a command from Earth. So they essentially just have to tell the rover where to go, and then it's up to the rover and its hazard avoidance software to find the best way there. There's no real-time control. But it only takes about 11 seconds to get a command to the moon. Still not exactly real time, but it gives operators on Earth more control. If you were playing a game with a 10 second delay, it would drive you crazy. You, you could not successfully drive a car in a video game with a 10 second. We've actually tested ourselves on that. We've actually tried injecting delays into our simulations and it's terrible. So what we have is a, uh, a middle ground, a semi-autonomous operation. So what we do is we give waypoint commands to the rover. And what that is, is a command that says, hey, go out ahead maybe four meters in this direction. We tell them which direction, we steer it and so forth. And then it autonomously moves in that direction and it does its own hazard avoidance. It's gonna be uh, much more interactive than we're used to with the Mars missions. The measurements returned by Viper will provide insight into the origin and distribution of water on the moon and help determine how the moon's resources could be harvested for future human space exploration and habitation, allowing people to, in essence, live off the land on the moon. Sounds incredible, but it may actually happen. And I, for one, am really looking forward to what Viper can do and what it will find. Thank you for joining me. Remember each Tuesday to join David Denault for America's Return to Space and join me every Friday for America in Space. From the Florida Space Coast, I'm Dawn Meyer, Space Coast News Editor for About Space Today. Thanks for listening. Be sure to share our program with your family and friends and follow us on Facebook. Join us each week for news and information on America in Space.